Now, one of the most common comments or questions I get from you guys is this right here. Willie, I went on your social media or this person's social media and your grows are absolutely amazing. How do I get my grows to look like that? Because I've been cultivating for a while and my girls look nothing like that. I can't get them to look like that. How do I do that? Well, the fact of the matter is, even if you have the best genetics, you get the best environment, if your substrate is not on point, then your grows will never look like that. Having a top-notch substrate is one of the key components to getting the most out of your genetics. Not all substrates are built the same. I've tested so many different substrates, so many different recipes, and I can tell you from experience, a lot of them aren't as good as they say they are. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some things you could do to your substrate to bring it to that next level to get the most out of your genetics. This is gonna be a good one. You guys asked for it. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time here on Willie's World, I want to welcome you to the Trip Team family, TTF. That's what it's about. If this video helped you out, you found it interesting, you want to be part of the Trip Team family, then go down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell off to the side, so that way you guys know when I drop a new video. Also, social media is right there, Instagram, Patreon, Patreon private library, we got a private chat room, we got so many different crazy things over there, you guys definitely want to check it out. Now, if you guys want step-by-step -step detailed videos on grows and extractions and all types of crazy stuff, besides that, they get a ton of exclusive videos that can't be seen anywhere else, so if you guys want them videos, then you have to go over there. With that said, I want to tell you guys thank you so much for all your love and support. This is a video that's been requested by you guys, and I'm really excited to give it to you. Now, make sure you guys stay tuned to the end, because at the end of this video, we're going to be doing a huge giveaway. We're going to be giving somebody substrate for an entire year, genetics, all types of really cool stuff. And on top of that, I'm going to show you guys how you could get my substrate delivered straight to your door. So the same exact substrate I use in my grows, you guys will be able to use it too in your grows. So, you know, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you stay tuned to the end. So let's jump into this video. Now, most of you guys that might be watching this video already purchase your substrate from somewhere or you already make it. And the truth of the matter is, substrate is just comprised of three basic things to make your basic substrate. This is a basic, basic substrate. You get your nutrient, you got your filler and what's gonna retain moisture, and then you have H2O. That's the three things you need to make a substrate. That's your very basic, simple substrate recipe. Now, of course, the ratios and what type of stuff you use can vary greatly, but that's gonna create your basic substrate. Now, to bring your substrate to the next level, there's things we use called additional supplements or micronutrients or macronutrients or you know microbes, all different things we add to our substrate to really bring it up a level, to make it the best possible substrate for the fungi that we're actually cultivating. Now, substrates can vary greatly, but you're gonna see three types of substrates commonly on the market. You're gonna have a hardwood-based substrate, you're gonna have a manure-based substrate, and a cocoa-based substrate. Now, of course, you could get a substrate that's a mix of all three or two of them, and you know, it could vary greatly, but that's gonna be the three common substrates that you guys see on the market or you know, your average cultivator making. Now, to determine which substrate you need, first you need to determine which type of fungi you're actually cultivating. Once you figure that out, you could figure out what does that mushroom prefer to eat as its nutrient? What does it need to get the most out of it? Now, if it's a manure loving mushroom, then you're gonna use a manure based substrate. If it's a wood loving mushroom, you're gonna use a hardwood based substrate. Now, cocoa's a little bit different because most mushrooms that will fruit off of those other two substrates will also fruit off of cocoa, just sometimes not as well. So that's why cocoa's there. Cocoa's great because it's not really that nutritious, which is a positive and a negative in a way. So it's not that nutritious, so your chances of contamination are much lower, but because it's not that nutritious, you're not gonna get those amazing yields out of it. Now, if you do get amazing yields from cocoa, then just imagine if you switched over to manure, you would probably get much better yields. And one thing that's proven by HPLC, we could, you know, undeniably prove this, 
is mushrooms that grow on a manure based substrate or a nutrient rich substrate like manure or straw or things like that have an increase in potency. There is a slight increase in potency when they grow on those substrates. There's also a slight increase in size. Now cocoa is great, but it's not the best and that's the truth. Now, once you have your basic substrate recipe, now I have plenty of videos telling you guys how to make a basic substrate. You know, if you guys want to go watch that, once you have that basic recipe, now you can start to play with things and add some of these additional or supplemental nutrients. These are really going to bring it to the next level, but it's very important that you do it the right way. Too much of anything isn't good. So let's jump into the first thing you could add to your substrate to really bring it up to the next level. Now, the first thing you'll see people adding to their substrate is one of the most common, and that's gypsum, also known as calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate or gypsum is something that mushrooms desperately require. Now you'll see people adding it to their grains, you'll see them adding it to their substrate, and this is something that's kind of a must. We see people that don't add it to their substrate, but really adding this to your substrate is just gonna give you that extra little bit of calcium that's really gonna push your mushrooms to the next level. Now, of course, we'll get into calcium later because I wanna talk why calcium is so important and you know how big of a deal it is. But gypsum is one of the most common things you'll see people adding to their substrate. Most substrate, it comes standard, it comes automatically in most substrates and in most grains. But if you're building your own substrate, I definitely suggest you use some gypsum. Now gypsum is usually added in at 5%. So let's say you have a 50-50 cocoa verm substrate. So it's 50% vermiculite, 50% cocoa. So let's say you do five cups of cocoa and five cups of vermiculite. That's gonna make you 100% 50-50 substrate, your cocoa-based substrate. Now, what you would also do is take a half a cup of gypsum and put it on top of there. It's 5% of the total cups or, you know, the volume that you used. So if we use 20 cups of materials to make our substrate, we would use one cup of gypsum. That's gonna be 5%. We always wanna keep our gypsum at 5%. It doesn't count towards the total percentage of your substrate. So it's not like you're adding 95% of the other ingredients and then 5% of gypsum. It doesn't work that way. You just keep track of how many cups or how many buckets or how many quarts you use and then figure out what 5% of that would be and you add that as gypsum in the end. You mix everything together filled capacity, and then you get it ready for sterilization or pasteurization, whatever you're doing. The next additional supplement or nutrient I like to add to my substrates is oyster shell. Now oyster shell, when you purchase it, is gonna come in these little pebble forms just like this. Now what you wanna do is you wanna grind it up in a coffee grinder or a blender and make it a really fine powder. You wanna get it as powdered as you possibly can. Now once you have it all powdered, I like to store it away in a Tupperware jar or in a bucket so that way I have it ready for use. Now once I have it in a fine powder, it's ready to use. This is something I like to add to my substrate to bring it to that next level and we're gonna talk about why. This oyster shell is very, very high in calcium. It's almost 100% calcium. If you have the perfect amount of calcium in your substrate, you're always going to have stronger mushrooms. And let me explain how that works. We've seen upwards of a 15% increase in potency doing HPLC testing from high calcium substrates. The reason for that is, is it helps build the cell structure in the mushrooms. So let's just use this as an example. When we're kids, our parents tell us to drink milk because it helps build our bones, right? The calcium in the milk helps build our bones in our body. Well, it does the same exact thing for mushrooms. Mushrooms are very, very similar to humans. So what the calcium actually does is it helps build a stronger cell structure in the mushrooms. And the stronger that cell structure is, the more potent that mushroom is going to end up being. So in the end, if you use a substrate that has the perfect amount of calcium, you're going to see a big return in your final product. We've been able to test this with monocultures grown in the same conditions, but on a calcium high substrate to a calcium low substrate, and then HPLC them, the calcium high substrate always outperforms the calcium low. So if you just use basic gypsum, it's never going to give it that, oh, 
that it needs to really bring those fruits to the next level. This calcium high substrate always outperforms by 10 to 15% in the end. The next thing I like to add to my substrates is coffee. Now it's very important that you add the right amount of coffee in the right way. You don't wanna just throw raw coffee into your substrate. It would have too much nitrogen and too much acid and that could actually be bad for mycelium. You don't wanna overdo it. So typically what we'll do is we'll use spent coffee grinds or we'll use diluted coffee in our mix. So when we're bringing our substrate to filled capacity, we might do one cup of coffee to 10 cups of water and dilute it down that much. And just that little bit is gonna give the mushrooms and the mycelium what they need to really thrive. Now, if you wanna throw spent coffee grinds into your substrate, that's perfectly fine as well. I suggest running them two or three times before you actually use the grinds and add it. You wanna make sure that you're washing out a lot of that stuff that could become toxic if it's too high, like the nitrogen or the acids. It can make your substrate not hospitable for the mycelium or the mushrooms. So you don't wanna overdo it. This is something that you need to play around with and find the correct ratio. I usually like to use a one to 2% ratio in my substrates. That's what I found to be the sweet spot, but some people will go a little bit more. It really depends on what you're doing. Now, the reason why we use coffee or diluted coffee or coffee grinds in our substrates or to bring them to filled capacity is because of the nitrogen and the acid. So if we can make our substrate slightly acidic, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna be more mold resistant. So we'll be able to make it less hospitable for molds, but perfect for the mycelium. Another thing is the nitrogen. Nitrogen is a very important thing that mushrooms require, and you have to make sure you have the right levels to get the most out of whatever you're cultivating. The next thing I love to use is straw. Now, straw is one of the best things for mushrooms. Now, don't confuse straw for hay. They're two completely different things. You wanna use straw when you're cultivating mushrooms. Hay isn't gonna do much for you. Now, some people will just cultivate their mushrooms on a straight bed of straw. They won't use anything else. They'll soak their straw, they'll bring it to filled capacity, they'll pasteurize or sterilize, and then they'll spawn their grains directly to the straw. You see people doing this, you'll see them doing the straw logs or the laundry basket tech, things like that with just straw, and mushrooms completely thrive on it. What I actually like to do is I like to cut my straw up into half inch, one inch pieces, and I like to mix it in with my manure based substrate. Now, if you are using a manure based substrate, most manure will already have straw in it because that's what the horses consume. That's what the cows consume. So most of them, you will see straw inside of it. Now, some animals are grain fed, they don't eat straw, but if you guys are using manure that comes from straw fed animals, a lot of that's gonna be residual in the manure. So you might not have to add it in the end. Now, if you guys are doing a cocoa based substrate, if you guys wanna add straw, this is gonna add a huge boost of nutrients to your substrate. So I always tell people, once you feel comfortable enough to start playing around with different nutrients and you're using a cocoa based sub, add straw as the first thing you would add. It's gonna add a ton of beneficial nutrients to that substrate. The mushrooms are gonna thrive on it. The mycelium's gonna thrive on it. It's gonna do really, really well. Now the downside to straw is if it isn't prepared the correct way, there's a very high chance of contamination. The reason for that is it's hollow. So if you look at straw, you'll see it's hollow. There's a lot of bacteria and molds and things like that that could be sitting inside there. So typically what I like to do to get my straw ready to be used in my substrate is I'll cut it in one inch, half inch pieces. I'll put it in a tub. I'll fill it up with water and antibacterial soap and I'll just let it soak for a half hour, 45 minutes, mixing it up every once in a while. Once that soak is done, I'll strain it out. I'll wash off my straw really, really good to make sure that there's no soap left behind. And then it's ready to be mixed in with my dry ingredients. So if I'm making a manure based or I'm making a cocoa based sub, I'm gonna mix that straw in there. I usually like to use about a 10% ratio of straw and that will count towards the total value of your substrate. So if I'm doing a 45, 45, 10 substrate, I'm gonna do 45% cocoa, 45% vermiculite and 10% straw. So that's gonna be my 100% right there. 
Now, obviously you could play around with these ratios and do whatever you want. That's just an example of something that you could do, but there's so many other ratios that you guys could use. But straw is an amazing nutrient for mushrooms and they thrive on it, but there's also that downside of it getting contaminated if it's not pasteurized or sterilized the proper way. Now, when I say pasteurized and sterilized, it really depends on what you're doing. You'll see a lot of gourmet mushroom cultivators that sterilize, but you'll see a lot of other mushroom cultivators like myself pasteurize it just really depends on what you're doing is going to dictate if you're sterilizing or pasteurizing but it's very important if you add straw that you do it the correct way or you're probably going to get contaminated now the next thing you could add to your substrate is worm castings worm castings go really really good in substrates but i suggest that you don't use any more than five percent Anything over that, you could actually make your substrate too nutritious, which can be no good. Like I said, it could actually make things get contaminated. So keeping a 5% ratio in your substrate is going to do you well. Now, some people use 2%, 2.5%, but I suggest never going over 5% if you guys are going to use worm castings. Another thing with worm castings is if you guys are going to use them, I suggest making sure you use worm castings that don't have worms in it. If you want, you can get the one with the worms in it and remove the worms and let them go outside. But I suggest not putting them over into your substrate if you can. And the last additional nutrient we're gonna talk about adding to your substrate is bat guano. Bat guano is very, very nutritious and you guys could add it in small increments to your substrate. Now bat guano is kind of expensive. It really depends on where you're getting it from. But if you get it and you want to use it in your substrate recipe, it will work really, really well. Now, one of my favorite mushrooms to cultivate with bat guano in the substrate recipe is cordyceps. And there's a reason for that. Cordyceps survive off of eating dead bugs and things like that out in the wild. So bats also eat bugs. So in their poop or their manure, there's a lot of bug residue, and that does really, really well for cordyceps. So if you guys are cultivating cordyceps and you wanna bring your cordyceps substrate up to that next level, bat guano is absolutely amazing to add to the mix. Just keep it really low. You don't wanna overdo it. Now, of course, you could add bat guano to any mushroom substrate. It doesn't matter what type of mushroom you're cultivating, bat guano could go into it and it's gonna help the mushrooms, the mycelium perform even that much better. Now, of course, there's so many other things I've played around with and things I use in my personal substrates and things that you might use, but it's all about playing around with different things, different ratios, and finding out what's gonna give you the best substrate for the mushrooms you're cultivating. Now, one of the most important things, and I cannot stress this enough, so if you're watching this video, pay very close attention to this part right here. If you're using ingredients that are made for plant cultivation, so gypsum that's made for plant cultivation, or you know, some type of microbes that are made for plant cultivation, make sure that it's not already pre-contaminated with trichoderma. Trichoderma is green mold, and it's one of the molds that havocs us the most in mushroom cultivation. But for plants, it's amazing. It's very good for plants. So a lot of these companies that produce materials for plants will pre-contaminate their materials with trichoderma because it's intended for plant cultivation uses. And if we use that in our substrate, the chances are our substrate's gonna get contaminated. So you always wanna make sure the materials you're using are not contaminated with trichoderma. Now, this is the big announcement. We're gonna get into the giveaway, and I wanna tell you guys how you could use my substrate to cultivate. So if you guys wanna use my substrate to cultivate, then you guys can go to browntreasure.com and pick this up right here. This is Willie's Blend. This is over a year in the making. I'm really excited about this. This isn't my product, but I helped develop it for a certain cause. So we're gonna be doing a Trip Team Family Scholarship and every single time you guys buy one of these bags of Willie's Blend, a small portion of that goes towards the scholarship. Every single year, we're gonna give a scholarship to an aspiring mycologist or chemist or, you know, that's going off to college or somebody that just graduated that needs help with their student debt and things like that. As long as they're in the fields that we love, then we're gonna give out a scholarship every single year and every single one of you guys that purchase one of these Willie's Blend are helping to support that. 
I don't make no money from it. No money goes in my pocket. It was a deal that we put together to fund this scholarship. It's really, really exciting. So this is the only substrate company on the island of Puerto Rico, you know, where my family's from, an island that I absolutely love. It's the only substrate company there. So for over a year, I developed a very special substrate that can't be found nowhere else. I'm telling you, this substrate is absolutely amazing. You guys will see the difference. Here's some of the grows I did over the past year with this substrate recipe. And as you guys can see, these grows are just end to end absolutely ridiculous. Now we didn't just jump into this blind, we've been testing it out compared to everything else that's on the market. And the Willy's blend has been outperforming. It's been colonizing faster, it's been pushing out bigger, stronger fruits. And if you guys don't believe me, Give it a try. I mean, this was something that was a year in the making and I even flew down to the island to show them how to make this and put the whole operation together so that way I could guarantee what you guys are getting. So every time you guys get one of these bags, you're usually gonna be getting the highest quality substrate that you can't get anywhere else in the world. So let's get into the giveaway part. So one of you guys that purchased something from this company is gonna get free substrate for an entire year, 12 months. So every single month, you'll receive 10 pounds of fresh substrate for an entire year. Now to enter this giveaway, it's really, really simple. All you need to do is just go purchase something from their company. It doesn't matter how big, how small, it really doesn't matter and follow them on Instagram. Those two things, that's all that's required and they're gonna pick a winner the second week of June. So the second week of June, I'm gonna go down there to inspect their operation again to make sure everything's operating the way it should be. You know, I'm very, very strict about stuff like this. If I'm not happy with the way something is, I will not attach my name to it. I won't vouch, I won't do any of that. So I stay up with them and I make sure they're doing what they need to do in order for me to be associated with the company. It's very, very important. This is the first time I've ever done something like this and it's all for that scholarship. And I'm really proud about the product that you guys will receive. Now, one other cool thing to this whole thing is every single time you purchase something off of their company, you have the chance of random genetics from my personal library being in your shipment. So if you guys want some genetics from my personal library and you wanna cultivate with my substrate, then definitely go check out browntreasure.com. Tell them Willie sent you. I'm telling you, these people are absolutely amazing. And this completely takes all the guesswork out of everything. You don't need to guess what's the correct ratio of these you know, micronutrients do I need to add to my substrate. It's all in there, it's ready to go. So you guys take the guesswork out of everything. So if you guys wanna get in on that giveaway, you guys want random genetics, you guys wanna try that substrate, then make sure you guys go over there, show them some love, go check them out. I'm gonna link their website down below in a pinned comment so you guys could just click on the website, go over there, get whatever you need, and within a couple days you guys will have it. If you guys do use the Willy's Blend to cultivate, Tag me on Instagram in your picture of your grow. And what I'll do is I'll repost it if you guys tag me in it. Cause I'm really interested in hearing from you guys and seeing how you like it. It's really important. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys. I couldn't do this without you. You guys truly are my world. And I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all your love and support. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.